ho, 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 ho. Do I feel good today? What's up, DTL Universe? Welcome in to your sports and sports betting brand of record. We call it Driving the Line. We're here every single day at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. If you have not subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, do it right now, please. Hit that like button every time you come in and then start chatting because we have the best chat in all of sports. Also, if you have not shared the show yet, we are growing every single day. We encourage you to do that now. We're also the most transparent show, and we're coming off a fantastic day at the brand. Look at all of those check marks. My man, Charles, a perfect 4-0. Your boy, 4-1. Shane Lowry lost by one stroke, or I would have been perfect yesterday. Look at Raphael. Look at my man, A.B. And Howie Schwab. You know if he has a bad day, he's going to come right back today. He is in the chat. If you have any questions for him, March Madness, he is the man. He will answer them for you in real time. Now, we got a full show today. March Madness heading into the weekend, college baseball. We've got Players' Championship right now. So let's bring in our five-tool player, my partner here at Driving the Line, A.B. And A.B., I got to tell you. It's like a 24-7 job right now. We are on full go. First of all, good morning, sir. You look fresh today. Good morning, coach. Good morning, crew. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I feel fresh, right? You know, I don't have to shave my head. Finally uh, <laughs> knocked down two picks last night, so that was always nice. Hey, I'll tell you what, though, I was trying to catch you all day, dude. You are on fire. Well, you missed you know, that last one by one stroke. One, one stroke. stroke. One stroke. Like also, Johnson's. Oh, yes. go ahead. Right. No, 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 I'm just saying, uh, coach. We'll be continuing his round one golf picks. I put my round one career on the line yesterday, A.B. You did. You did. I respected it. You did, and you came right through. Also, another one that we don't have on the recap screen. Zach, how did the proposal go? We've got to hear about that. Let us know. Drop that in the chat. we got to get that green check going. You're damn right. Did she or did she not say yes? Our first DTL uh, engagement. By the way, Raphael. In the chat right now, you have any questions for him? He will answer them in real time. Look at this. Look at this. This is dedication to the brand, ladies and gentlemen. Now, A.B., we've got a couple of things to get to because the chat wanted it. The universe wanted it. And is all. Oh, let's yeah. look back for a second right there. She said yes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Can we please put congratulations, Zach, into the chat right now? To let him know what the DTL universe thinks about that. Congratulations. And, and AB, she's letting him watch this morning too. You know after what? That's the a, engagement. Well, that's how you could tell. All right. I mean, obviously, Zach, first class individual. If if she's marrying him, you know she's double first class individual right there. So shout out to both of you. Yeah, absolutely. We couldn't be pulling for you anymore. And this driving the line wedding live stream is gonna be awesome. Wow, I didn't know anything about that, but I'm here for it. I don't think Damn they it. did either. <laughs> I'm here for it. Uh, all right, we got two big announcements. If you are not a member of the crew yet, I encourage you to join right now. You get a little green thing next to your name, and you get all kinds of exclusive content. We made a business decision that live streams on Monday nights for right now are going to be more important so we can educate you and get you set for all the big games during the week. So we're going to put shoot your shot on hiatus just for March until we get through a B and we're going to have a live stream this Monday night. You're going to be hosting. I'll be, I got a big golf event. I can't even talk about it yet. That's going to be on ESPN two, the golf channel. So we're going to have ourselves everywhere, but I like that decision and you, you guys will break down all the brackets, all the odds, all that kind of stuff, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the reason that we're putting Shoot Your Shot on a hiatus is to replace it for the time being with live streams going for March Madness all throughout the tournament. So don't think that we're just, like, dropping one off and not doing it. No, 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 no. This is going to be so much more helpful, and it's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to break down brackets on Monday, everything that you need to know for the first games, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday once this thing starts going live. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Jason says, boo, I had two great futures lined up for the crew on Shoot Your Shot. Well, Jason, if they're futures, then in a month, you can still give them out on Shoot Your Shot. It's coming back, but this is all fluid. We've been on for less than two months. Come on. Now, you mentioned the brackets. A, B. 
It's time to find out who is the best college basketball picker in the DTL universe. Educate me. Absolutely. So the driving the line uh, March Madness bracket challenge group is live. All right. It's on ESPN. We have the link in the chat and we also have the link in the show description right now. You can scroll down and look. It's on the second paragraph right there uh nicodemus welcome new member congratulations thank you welcome to the crew but yes if you just look right there um on the show description you will see the link click that it's free open for everyone so go ahead and get yourself in and then when the brackets come out monday night we'll go live talking about how to break these things down but yes you can also find it on our twitter as well at driving the line Mm, a lot of information there. Big Cheesy says coach is going down. I might have to have a one-on-one -on -one with Big Cheesy to see who has a better bracket. I well, might have to do that. So you bring up a good point. Okay, so with that, all right, you two can have, you know, your side showdowns, which I like this rivalry that's forming right here. But number two, we're going to have all kinds of cool prizes. Uh, yep. Last year, we gave out a title belt. We're going to have all kinds of cool stuff. So we don't have all that locked in. But understand, the bracket is absolutely free to join. Does it cost a penny? It's open for everybody. You don't have to be a premium member or anything like that. And we'll get the prize lists up. Um, but they're going to be awesome. We're working on it right now. So, yeah, just sign up, get going, and we'll take care of the rest. Yeah, and by the way, because I know we got to get to picks, uh, follow me on social media because last year I finished second in the all-time greatest sports center anchor bracket of all time. I took down Chris Berman. I took down all the big boys. I need you guys again this year. I need your vote. I'm going to win that damn thing this year. The greatest sports center anchor of all time right here. Let's go. We're going to do it on the show every day. I don't give a damn. We're going to do it on the show every single day. Now, what are the crew selections today, AB? Yep, four great college basketball options for you right here. Tennessee, minus nine and a half against the Mississippi State. You've got Wisconsin, minus three and a half. You have UConn, minus nine and a half. North Carolina, minus seven and a half. Those four options. The poll is in the chat now. Vote now, and we will update as we always do at the end of the show. You know, I'm looking at my paper right now, and I tell everybody, grab your paper, grab your pencil. We've got a ton of red hot picks. So it's that time to get to the picks. Let's go. John says, laughing my ass off. Coach loves the name drops. I do not. I do not. Just because my <laughs> desk was next to, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna drop a name. I'm just kidding. Look who is here today. We've got all oh, two of our absolute very best. Soupy is back. Soupy, that the beard game is on point today, big boy. On point. Oh yeah, you, you you know it has to be. It's a Friday. We can't. There's no casual Friday here on driving the line, especially because it's. We've got conference championships no more than my Quinnipiac Bobcats. They're playing St. Peter's at 6.30 tonight. These are my boys. Bobcat up. They have the best, A.B., I don't know if you know about this. They have the best combo building maybe in all of small college sports. They've got their hockey yeah. and basketball right in the same building. Right, Johnny? Oh, yeah. It's spent many a times there. Love it. Absolutely beautiful arena. Where, of course, national hockey champions wow look at that tease we're gonna start with hockey in just a second but not before we give love to our man yesterday that if you would have followed his uh soccer picks you could have paid for a crew membership for the next five years charles the man from the dirty dirty good morning sir morning coach morning all crew he keeps it nice and simple he just keeps it nice and simple all right let's get i love ready. this yin and yang i love it i love it I want to start on the ice. So, Soupy, as always on Fridays, you get to start. Mm -hmm. I'm staring at two big plays. Let's go. Two big plays because we only got two big games today. Well, we're going to start with the Jets on the puck line. It'll be a Laurent Bessois game in the cage. He saved 37 of 38 against Anaheim in the last game. And it'll be Josh Gibson for Anaheim. Uh, he's... 3.31 goals allowed. He's allowed six points to six goals to Chicago, six to Dallas, four to Han, Han, San Jose. 
it should be an easy game for the Jets tonight. And we're going to go Kings, Blackhawks. I'm going with the over five and a half. Blackhawks have scored 20 in their last four. Connor Bedard is on a run right now. Three goals and five assists in his last two games. They're handling the puck with confidence as a whole. 50% Corsi percentage over their last four games. And L.A., their they're A.R. tough defense, one of the best probably in the league. But I think it could either be the Kings handle all the goal scoring and maybe get a couple from Chicago, or maybe Chicago could really show that they, they're an improving offense. So give me the five, five and a half on that one, over five and a half. Five and a I, half. Know, I know it's very, very early in the show, but I feel it's appropriate uh, after that. <laughs> do you guys want to do the work? I didn't think so. I can't now, even Raphael pronounce says, half of what he said. I know. He's <laughs> like, like way over me. That's why I can get Laurent Bessois, but I had trouble saying San Jose. <laughs> yeah. Happy well, Friday, you know, everybody. hey, French, French and Spanish, man. It's tough to it's tough to be, you know, fluent in both. <laughs> uh, by the way, our resident numbers expert, Raphael, says, Soupy, grab your Quinnipiac now because that number will move again right now at minus two. So, Raphael, always looking out for the crew. Now. Joey says, uh, Chuck is low-key, red hot. Do not let the nice guy facade fool you. The man says, Coach, I need to be on Fridays. I got weekend picks that are forever. So, Charles, let's start with your Saturday slate. And they seem to all be sitting in one game. Talk to me. Yeah, we're going to go to the EPL, Fulham, and Tottenham. We have a London Derby to close out the Premier League day. Fulham, they start match day 29, winning two of their last three EPL fixtures while averaging 1.19 goals at Craven Cottage, with their matches having three or more total goals in six straight outings. Tottenham, they make the short trip to West London, riding even higher, only dropping one game in six, with Spurs averaging 2.3 team goals away from home. And there's been three goals or more in 10 straight for the North Londoners. Tottenham has also won nine of 11 versus Fulham in all competitions. And I see another dominant display. I am going to go ahead and grab the over 1.25 first half goals. I definitely can see two in the first half, over three full time, and Tottenham team total over 1.5 as I can see a one to three, two to three, even at worst, a one to two type final score. Yeah, you really got to keep an eye on the Premier League because teams kind of go through the ups and the downs. As a next level soccer capper myself, I had my eye on this game. AB, go. Yes, uh, Charles just mentioned Craven Cottage. I just wanted to uh, mention that that sounds like a candle store down at the outlet mall. I don't know what Craven <laughs> does, but they got candles on sale this weekend, boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I, I tell you, we tell you here all the time on driving the line. You may look at the recap and go, wait a second. How he's got one play coaches on the other play. We don't always have to agree. And I like to play into the narrative that if you play multiple days in a row, that these players are not used to that. So if you see uh, how he likes Michigan State plus seven and a half today, I like Purdue minus seven and a half today. They've been sitting. They are fresh. Michigan State had a tough game yesterday. So you decide. Do you want to roll with Howie or you want to roll with the coach? This is what the March Madness bracket is truly going to be all about. Also, Howie loves South Florida minus six and a half today as well. I'm on the Hornets plus nine and a half. They play the Suns. The Suns last night, they cast for me because we had the Celtics minus five and a half. You're going to go back to back nights. You're going to travel to Charlotte. The Hornets have shown at times that they can be a pretty good ball club. You're going to give me almost 10 points. I will take that. Speaking of the NBA, Soupy, let's come back to you. You're going with two teams that aren't necessarily great teams, but they can certainly score. Yeah, exactly. Like tonight, again, not a really good NBA slate. There really wasn't much of like a, hey, competition, got to take this game. So you have to find your picks where you can find them. Hawks, Jazz, both are just got awful defenses. <laughs> 28th and 29 in adjusted off, uh, defensive ranking. And they're both top 15 in adjusted offensive ranking. 224 is where I got it. Like, that could be an easily a 227-228 total. So mm -hmm. getting it at 224, I, I love it too much. Especially Jazz dead last in defensive rating over their last 10 games. Atlanta's actually a little better, but I don't. I haven't liked Atlanta's competition over the last few weeks. So, yeah, 224, this is an easy one. 
No, oh, man. I love when Soupy says that's an easy one. Uh, by the way, let's educate just a little bit. Ed says, hey, Charles, where can I bet the over three? I can only find the bet with a hook. A lot of books, Charles, right? You can buy it down two, three, and just add a little juice, correct? A lot of bet three, six, five. So, um, yeah, you just have to shop around, but absolutely. Yeah. On most books, if you look, there's like that little yeah. box and you'll see yeah. three and a half. You can buy it down to 3.25 or three and it'll just add juice for you. So that is how I always do soccer. If I bet the over, I'll usually buy that down. If I bet the under, I will buy it up. So we've done your Saturdays, Charles. What about Sunday, big boy? Yeah, we're going to move to France League One with Montpellier yeah. and PSG. Uh, this Sunday League One finale should be a spectacle anytime these two teams meet. Although Montpellier has had little luck versus the Parisians, losing nine of the past 10 meetings, but the home side will be at full rest with PSG playing midweek. Montpellier has also been on a scoring spree, hitting the back of the net in six straight with all six fixtures having three or more total goals. PSG, they arrived boasting a 25-match unbeaten streak while scoring two or more team goals in 14 of their previous 16 overall events. When these two clubs meet, we just simply see goals with three or more being scored in nine of the 10 encounters. I expect Montpellier to come out and score a first half goal as well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab their first half team total over 0 0.5 at plus 150. They have first half goals in four of their last five. Also, I'm going to bundle that together with the both teams to score in over 2.5 and over three full-time goals as this one could be another one of those at worst one to two type final score. But I, I could see another two to two, one to three, two to three final score. I love when Charles is like Amazon. He's just bundling plays together for everybody out there. By Dude, the way, and, Paul, and, and he sounds like Keith Jackson calling the Premier League. Like, whoa, <laughs> Montpellier. <laughs> uh, by the way, shout out to my man, Daniel Greer. Last week, now I was calling the API, but he did an incredible job. Did he not, AB, hosting the show last week? Oh, yes. It, man. Dude's a pro, 100%. He's, he's in fantastic, the, he's, fantastic. Thank you, Soupy. Daniel, you get the Soupy stamp of approval. You're also a crew member, which is awesome. You're also in the chat, which is awesome. You're also telling people to hit that like button, which is awesome. Now, I did miss one from Howie Schwab. He sent it in a little bit late. That's why I didn't see it. Florida Atlantic. We never want to miss his favorite team outside of St. John's, minus five and a half. And, A.B., I know that you're all over these plays. Uh, a little tennis from out here in the desert, uh, Yannick Center, money line minus 160, play that straight. Or if you need a parlay piece, you can use Coco Goff on the money line. She's minus 285, but you can put her with anything else on the board and get a much better number. That's what I would encourage you uh, to do. Uh, A.B., yeah. I told 40 you. 40 low, baby. Money. It's time <laughs> for some tennis. I forgot to say last <laughs> night that we've got to come up with something – I don't know what the word is special because how he hit a play yesterday that was plus 700. He did plus 700. Yeah. On a tennis play. Yeah. And we cast it easy. So we got to yeah. come up with something that we, if we would say like plus 500 or higher, we do something special, maybe some confetti or something. I don't know. I don't know. TJ <laughs> says, Oh, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. We'll figure Just it give, out. Give me a weekend. Yeah. Me and producer, man. Yeah. We'll get in the lab. I'm amazed when you guys go into the lab and then I don't hear from you. And then you guys come out. The stuff that you've come up with is, I mean, there's no better production in America. Uh, I'll tell you this. It's like, it's like WWE days to where it's actually producer man in the lab. I'm just watching the door. So nobody's <laughs> coming in. He is amazing. Producer man is freaking amazing. Um, all right. I've got four big golf plays today. And yesterday, I, I had a little anxiety. I'll be honest with you. I, I thought my round one career soupy was on the line because I said if I didn't hit two out of three, I was not going to make any more round one picks in the history of time. Thank God Max Homa went in the water on 18 to let Scotty Scheffler <laughs> cash that minus 170. Yeah, I, Coach, I was going to say, we, we, we've got some years ahead of us on this show. I need you, I need you I available here. I know. <laughs> I may have to walk that back next time. Maybe not put my entire career on the line. Just right, maybe like got, a, a week off. 
Thank you, Soupy. See, you're yeah. like my I, that's what I love about you, Soupy. You come on on Fridays. You, you keep me, you know, because I get excited. I'm an excitable guy. Then, of course, you know, Charles is even more excitable than I am. So it just gets out of control, <laughs> completely out of control. We have to All try right. to rail, man. We have to. <laughs> All right. I got four big plays today. Round two exclusives. All right. These all tee off early afternoon, so you want to get them in. Tom Hoagie had a great start. He's a dynamic iron player, and the way this course is playing right now, you want to lean into good iron players, minus 105. Christian B, or Cbez, as the cool kids call him, he's had a pretty good year, but I don't see him playing better than Tom Hoagie, certainly not today, so that's my first play. Jason Day, also a great start. He shot a minus five. He's a former player's champion. Minwoo Lee just doesn't play well in Florida for whatever reason. The grass, the weather, I don't know what it is, but Jason Day, minus 120, love that number. Then Tommy Fleetwood, he also had a good first round. Jordan Spieth did not. Spieth struggled all over the yard. You're not going to find that in less than 24 hours, so give me Fleetwood, minus 115, and Xander. He was tied after 18 holes at the top of the leaderboard. This man just absolutely is an assassin. And you go minus 135 over Victor Hovland. Hovland's our reigning, defending, undisputed FedEx Cup champion. However, he has struggled. He has changed coaches yet again. He is searching. Xander is not. I'll take that number at minus 135. God, I feel good about all those. 6-0 and oh for the coach today? That's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm feeling. You know what else I'm feeling? On Fridays, I just wake up with a smile on my face. I know I'm going to see Soupy. I know I'm going to see Charles. But I also know I'm going to see some good old-fashioned college baseball parlays from my man, the greatest college baseball handicapper on planet Earth. So we take a step back. The floor, A.B., is yours. Appreciate that, Coach. And you know what? I want to give a shout-out to some folks in the crew who have also had some nice weekends so far betting college baseball Adam, $1,700 sitting in the account. Well done. My man, Scott, got over a G in there as well. We've got multiple, multiple. Love and it. I love it. Oh, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. So here's what we're going to do, all right? The big New Yorker challenge is on the line tonight. If I don't hit at least three of these four parlays, I will give out pizza money to five people tonight Ooh. so just type yep just type in in the chat right now and i'll get you we'll get all set up get that figured out but here's what we have for today first parlay tcu money line texas money line minus 105 all right tcu looking to get some consistency back after a tough weekend series last weekend against kansas where they lost two out of three texas playing excellent baseball right now, and they need to keep that going. So we're going to put those two together, minus 105. Next one, Texas Tech, money line, kind of the same deal. They need to just kind of calm down, get this thing back on track, hit the ball. They are legitimately a top three run scoring team in the country, and we're going to pair them with LSU. We don't get to play LSU much because their juice is always minus 50,000, but we get to play it today. So we're going to take it. Texas Tech, LSU. Put them both together, plus 105. All right, Florida State. I paid my penance earlier this week for going against the boys down there in Tallahassee. I'm going to put them together with Oregon State, minus 115. And then finally, Coastal Carolina. I really had to pay my penance on not playing them earlier this week. So we're going to put the Chanticleers together with UC Santa Barbara. Go Gauchos. Money line. Put those two together, minus 105. And the weather report out here on the West Coast for UCSB, very, very good. I just looked out my window. Looks spectacular for the weekend. Raphael says on the East Coast in Florida, weather could be an issue at the players. So be careful. If that's the case and you have a lot of rain and certain guys don't finish and it goes into Sunday, the betting can be very, very difficult. So pay attention to the weather. Uh, A.B., by the way, I know you may not have it handy. How have we done on our college baseball parlays so far this year? I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, we're like 27 and 6. Oh. Soupy, is that good in, in this world? Is that's, that good? I'm not a math major. That's um, – um, yeah, I was, I, I was a communications major like all of us, but, you know. 
You always get yeah. to, when you get the shit to clear us in. I'm always happy. <laughs> there we go. He's got the hat. There, 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 there we go. There we go. Boys down in yeah. Conway. Here. Get it for Dude, the boys. Down well in done Conway. on that hat. And number two. So this is the first weekend where conference play starts across the country. All right, for everybody, and it is a massive, massive weekend. We have ranked teams all over the place. One of the best matchups. All right, we have. Two top 15 teams in Tennessee and Alabama playing this weekend. I am fascinated with that one. And let me say, we don't have totals yet that are out. Uh, those two are going to score a bajillion runs. So just go ahead and keep an eye on that one. Shout out That's to our girl. Number, yeah. Uh, Melanie's in the chat. She gives you one of these, AB, and says 27 and 6 with the exclamation points all over the yard. Thank what you, Melanie. Thank yeah, what a much. cute comment. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're having a lot of love connections here on the show over the last few. Who knows, AB? Might might hit right. you right between the eyes. You never know. You <laughs> never know. All right, it's that time. We got to drop Charles off just for a couple of minutes. Time to educate, entertain. TJ says, love it. A.B., the king of baseball. You're damn right he is. All right. You guys know that when we get to NFL free agency, usually after day number three, things really start to drop off. Players go for that money. They get it quick. Teams get it quick. And then you don't hear it. So we thought it'd be kind of fun today. we got three different topics to kind of wrap things up in the world of the NFL. And, Supi, I'm going to start with you on the NFC side of things. Because late last night, a little bit of a surprise. The Chargers have unloaded Keenan Allen a multi-time Pro Bowl wide receiver, and he is headed to the Chicago Bears to join DJ Moore and perhaps Caleb Williams as the new starting rookie quarterback if they draft him. How do you think, if any, this will affect the NFC North or how we perceive the Bears? You know, I who knows? I'm going to go with who knows because – are they trading Justin Fields? Are they going to ride with him for a year? Are they going to draft Caleb Williams and start him right away? You know, it seems like whatever they're preparing for, they're trying to get better. You know, we said all last year they needed somebody on the other side of DJ Moore. They did. Mm -hmm. They didn't have Cole Komet is actually was a well improved tight end, but now Keenan Allen is probably one of the top three slot receivers in the league. He has been cop. He was great with Philip Rivers. He was great with Justin Herbert. I think this is going to set the tone for, especially with the Vikings. We don't really know what they're doing with their quarterback situation. The Packers are obviously getting better. They got Josh Jacobs now in the backfield. The Bears needed to do something because the the, the fans are starting to believe in them. Mm -hmm. They liked how they played last year. They want to believe in them, and especially with this quarterback situation, they want to feel like Ryan Poles is doing something that whoever is the quarterback next year, he has a great offense in place for him. Maybe I'm just the only one, but I, I like Justin Fields, and I feel like if you put a pretty good offense like now they have around him, he could be <laughs> a dynamic quarterback. So, A.B., let me come to you because Coach Phil, who's such an important part of the DTL universe. He's coaching right now in the UFL. He coached Keenan Allen for many seasons as a wide receivers coach for the LA Chargers now. And he used to rave about how great of a locker room guy this is. 108 catches last year, but more importantly, what he does behind the scenes. Your thoughts? Absolutely with the locker room mentality. And not only is that good for everybody, but it's good for the young players as well. Young wide receivers, uh, uh, anybody, right? Like that's what a guy like Keenan Allen could do. And especially for a quarterback, a young quarterback, and a young quarterback that is going through some issues right here. So I love it. Go spend the money, do it. Get yourself better. No matter who's at quarterback, he's going to help, and he's going to be a value add to the team. So I'm 100% with it, man. Do it. Like, you only have so much time, and especially if you're a coach, GM, players too. Like, they the NFL stands not for long for a reason. You know what I mean? So exactly go right. for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he makes everybody better for sure.
Yeah, Brad M says Bears fan agreed on fields. Keep him around for another year and see trade top spot and cash in on head to Cincinnati. No thanks. I mean, it's it, if you look at a lot of guys, the the pundits are not necessarily that high on Caleb Williams because everybody, you know, the easy lazy narrative. Oh, he's just like Patrick Mahomes because he plays that way. Uh, no, he's not. There's a cavernous gap between what Patrick Mahomes is and what Caleb Williams ultimately could be. Now, speaking of Patrick Mahomes, Soupy, let's go to the AFC because the Kansas City Chiefs, my beloved Kansas City Chiefs, I looked at the numbers. And if you don't get them right now, you cannot bet them at all. And they are plus 650 to win it all, to win the AFC plus 325. And before yesterday, you're like, ah, oh, but they haven't really done much to help Patrick Mahomes. But if I told you this, that you have Rasheed Rice on one side, Travis Kelsey, still playing at a Pro Bowl level, and you can get Marquise Hollywood Brown for one year and $11 million, and you get this cat on the other side, now all of a sudden it changes everything in my mind. They needed one, and Supi yesterday they got him. Your thoughts? And that's what we've been saying for the last – that's what we said all of last year. The wide receivers, the wide receivers, they don't have the wide receivers. They don't have the wide receivers. But guess what? They have Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes makes any wide receiver look good. But the thing is, Hollywood Brown is a good wide receiver. We've just always wondered, is he going to have a good quarterback throw him? Lamar Jackson in that offense, they weren't prone to throwing the ball. And then we saw when he was in Arizona, Kyler Murray was injured. So it was inefficiencies there. Quarterback, finally, he has the quarterback. He has... Hollywood Brown has immense speed, great route running abilities. Finally, since the days of Tyreek Hill, we feel like the wide receiver room is the best it's been. Rashid Rice was an amazing rookie last year. We did not talk about him too much until the end of last season, but he was probably one of the better wide receiver rookies last season. And now... You're going to have Hollywood Brown, a veteran, on the other side. Is it really, really tough to just throw the money at him again to win it? it just put Taylor Swift at the halftime show and <laughs> just plan it, and it's all set. Let's just do it. You use some words that I like, A.B. Soupy said speed, and he said contract, and it's one year. So if he works out, they can re-sign him to a multi-year deal. This was a perfect signing for the Kansas City Chiefs. But also now with him running that way and you got Rasheed Rice like in that 15 to 20 yard area and Kelsey 10 yards, it's going to be incredibly hard to stop. And by the way, Patrick Mahomes to win the MVP, he's the favorite at plus 600. Your thoughts? Patrick Mahomes has turned into Tom Brady. He's restructuring his deals now so that the team can go sign other players. It's legitimately like watching Brady with the Patriots. And here's the best part about it, okay? Look at Hollywood Brown. Yes, thin up and down career. Here's, here's where he fits in. What's the one thing that the Chiefs offense didn't have last year? The downfield threat. They didn't right. have it. The offense was changed. It was seven yards and in. We broke it down all season long worked they won a super bowl but now you have a downfield threat that not only works for mahomes to brown but it opens up rashi rice it opens up travis kelsey it opens up the entire field with it opens up patrick mahomes's legs to run it is super dangerous and here's the best part you have a veteran coach in andy reed who knows what he's doing and he's going to tell hollywood brown buddy welcome to a real <laughs> good professional team <laughs> All I need you to do is your job. You don't have to pick up slack for the whole team. You don't have to carry things on your shoulders. No, I need you to just do this. And it works in unison with everything else that we're doing. So you now have a star player with an easier workload. Dangerous, man. Dangerous. Yes. Like it, it's dangerous. Yeah. And he's only 26 years old. He'll be 27 this summer. So if he works out, you thought that whole dynasty talk with the Chiefs was over? Oh, it might just be beginning. Speaking of beginning, <clears throat> you know what we had a couple of days ago, gentlemen? Topic number three coming right up. We had the anniversary that I don't think anybody wants to think about again, but it shocked me to my core that it's been 
four years since COVID stopped the sporting world on a dime. At that time, I was flying from here in California, coast to coast, L.A., New York, L.A., New York, every single week to host the XFL pregame show because I did it because a certain person in charge had to. I would never do it again. But it got me thinking, Soupy. So many sports were in action at that time. NBA, NHL, no March Madness, the XFL, soccer around the world. So in your mind, what was the number one sport that took the biggest hit because of COVID in your mind? I know this is personal for you, Coach, but it, it is the XFL because, again, it was gone. I, we It was gone, and for that certain person who previously owned it, because of that, sold it. Now, but the XFL recovered. You know, they obviously merged with the USFL. They have the UFL now. But that league went bankrupt because of it. And every other league recovered. So we had the bubble. We had the bubble with the NHL and the NBA. Uh, same thing with MLB. We did lose March Madness that year, but it came back next year. So. Yeah, Big Cheesy says XFL. Yeah, other guys are, you know, it, it is very personal for me. I found it very hard to deal with when you file for bankruptcy, but yet you're still a billionaire and you still could have paid guys out, not even if it's me, but just certain guys, and you don't pay them. That's the issue I had, and I'm sure other leagues had that too. So we got the XFL from Soupy. AB, when you look at everything, and we should include the Summer Olympics in all this too, which, in your mind, took the biggest hit? So COVID didn't kill the XFL version 2.0. What did is not bringing back the greatest XFL announcer of all time. That's... <laughs> <laughs> what did it right there now? Uh, I heard Bruce Pritchard once say that he was asked about the XFL after the second time it failed. He goes, that thing's cursed, man. <laughs> it's cursed. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, during COVID, um, the ones that took the biggest hit, uh, I think was, you know, football in general, because it's just such um, a sport of so many people that are in close, you know, proximities together. You know, not only the fans, but the players and staff. I mean, it's just so many people that it was just difficult to do it. The sport that was the best in it, or the two sports, was golf and NASCAR. NASCAR yes. Yes. absolutely smashed during it because, one, you have one guy in a car. So once they kind of got it going, right, like th they had it figured out. But remember when they had, like, Actual NASCAR drivers playing, like, driving video games of, like, the course yes. in the race of that week. It was awesome. And I cannot, I cannot remember the driver. But, like, it's legit, like, the top ten drivers, like, competing like it's a live, you know, race. And one guy's about to win, and his kid unplugged it. From the <laughs> race. So, like, NASCAR, they crushed it. Golf crushed it. Um, but yeah, I mean, football, it was just tough because I mean, you have, you know, a hundred plus people of just staff coaches and players. It was brutal. Uh, MMA, like uh, UFC, what was the thing called? Like fight yeah. Island or something? Well, they, yeah, they did it in Jacksonville. Yeah. They did it in Jacksonville because Dana White is the one person that will always say, screw you. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Yeah. And they had the highest ratings that they've ever, ever had. By the way, to your point, AB, you Back then, you could bet on those drivers playing those video games. Yeah. Like, literally, you could bet everything. And I became the biggest KBO. Remember KBO? It's still yeah. going. Korean Baseball League. <clears throat> and I was up at 4 a.m. my time, sweating out in over 12 and a half. Like, I'm a degenerate of all degenerates. But that's all we had. That's it's, all we had. It's all we had. And you remember when, remember when the NBA went in the bubble and it took 24 hours for one player to to get his buddy to buy the most professional expensive drone there is and start bringing in food, start bringing in Xboxes, <laughs> like all this stuff. And it's like, oh, my God, what in the hell is going on? Like it, I didn't even watch the games all that much, but I watched TMZ because they had people like it was LAX, like just outside of the bubble, like, oh, here comes some lemon pepper wings. Here we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my God. I can tell these stories all day. COVID felt like Soupy didn't like like COVID felt like it it lasted forever. And now it's been four years. That's hard to believe. My I, I think the NBA took the biggest hit. And here's what I mean by this. And Soupy, I'd love your reaction. Is mm -hmm. the Lakers out here with LeBron James? They go, oh, well, he won a championship with the Lakers. Few people remember that because he won it in the bubble. And they don't give the bubble the credit that it probably, I guess, deserves. But they, like, put an asterisk next to LeBron James' name. And then we're talking about does he deserve a, a statue outside the arena because he didn't do what the other players did. So I think the NBA and LeBron took the biggest hit, in my opinion. Yeah, it, everybody wants to talk about, you know, the, the bubble was harder because of the situation. But, yeah, definitely, I think we all put an asterisk next to the – and guess what? It was a big year for L.A. because the Dodgers won the, the World Dodgers, Series that year yep. yeah. in, in the bubble. So does home field – does home court, home field advantage play a part? It always does. It always does. So when you don't have – you know, when you don't have to play in those certain situations – Mm -hmm. if they're a little looser a little more relaxed they don't have to worry so yeah yeah i think, hey, I think you know, the lakers real quick, not real quick, having shout to travel out, to shout out to shout out to our former dude he's still <laughs> one of our guys the jeweler remember halix was putting together dark parlays oh my god the jeweler he's now working in in finance somewhere but go oh, the jeweler yeah he was, was too great. smart for us yeah like, he, he was, was like i'm going to get out of this stupid business so I, that's right <laughs> He Kevin put together says, an Excel degenerate. file that I couldn't read. <laughs> yeah. I love this one. We'll end it on this one. We aren't degenerates. We family. You're damn right, Kevin. We're all family in this. And that's kind of how we all started. But we're trying to be smart. We're trying to do it together. A.B., quickly go. Yeah, yeah, real quick. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I'm seeing uh, a couple of questions in the chat in regards to college baseball of finding yeah. Florida State and uh, Oregon State. So if you're using DraftKings or any of the other, like, super large books, understand that things these these go up and they'll come down like they'll take it off the board not for anything like that's changing the game or anything like that it, it that just happens so give it five minutes reload it you'll see it back on there it happens to me too but yeah right. yeah all right very very good all yeah. right time to wrap things up let's get to the whip around <laughs> Yo, for those of you who couldn't come on at 10 a.m. Eastern time and maybe you missed some of the picks, that we go through them rapid fire, 15 seconds or less for every single pick. Oh, Supu, let's start with you. Give me all three, sir. Let's go. Let's go with the Jets on the puck line facing a god-awful Anaheim team with a, a bad goalie. I'm going to take Kings, Blackhawks, over five and a half. Both are playing really well right now. Both are scoring, so let's go there. And then Hawks, Jazz, over 224. Both really bad defenses, both solid offenses. Like that a lot out west, too. Now, Howie Schwab today, he's on these Michigan State plus seven and a half. He's also on South Florida minus six and a half, Florida Atlantic minus five and a half, all tournament games. And then two on the tennis court, Yannick Center, money line minus 160. And if you're looking for a parlay piece, use Coco Goff on the money line. She's a heavy favorite, but you can bring something else down or get a better number before of it. Uh, give me all six Saturday and Sunday. Charles, go. EPL Fulham versus Tottenham over 1.25 first half goals, over three full-time goals in Tottenham, team total over 1.5. Sunday, France League One, Montpellier and PSG. Montpellier first half team total over 0 0.5. Both teams to score in over 2.5 and over three full-time goals. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to go next. I like Purdue minus a seven and a half. We're allowed to disagree. It's fine. Purdue's been sitting around. They are fresh. When you play back-to-back -back days in the tournament, pay attention to the teams that can do it and those that can't. I'm banging on the fact that Purdue wins by double digits. Then NBA Hornets plus nine and a half. The Suns cast for us last night because we faded them. We had the Celtics. So tonight they travel to Charlotte. I don't think Charlotte's going to win, but I think they can stay within nine and a half. Then four plays from round two at the Players' Championship. Tom Hoagie over Christian B. Jason Day over Min Woo Lee. Tommy Fleetwood over Jordan Spieth. And Xander tied after 18 holes at the top. Minus 135 over Victor Hovland. I hate to call people out, but Joe says, uh, didn't Howie hit a plus 700 yesterday? Thanks for joining us. We talked about it 30 minutes ago, Joe. 
And uh, also, Joe, uh, another Joe, or John, says, you guys laid out this show perfectly. It flows flawlessly. That's just what we do. So I'm going to take that as a credit to producer man behind the scenes. Because, A.B., you and him are doing yeoman's work. Bring us home. We four college baseball parlays. TCU money line, Texas money line, minus 105. And, Joe, you're right. When that thing hit yesterday, I was like, oh, my God, Howie, yes. <laughs> Texas Tech money line, LSU money line, plus 105. Florida State money line, Oregon State money line, minus 115. And Coastal Carolina money line and UC Santa Barbara money line minus 105. And yes, just like we talked about with the college baseball teams and books of it coming off the board, they'll drop them back in. Oregon State just came back up. Florida State will hear shortly. Let me read that correctly. You guys have been killed the layout of the show. It flows flawlessly and the music is fire. And we have more music to come. Oh, and Joe is in a meeting, so we're going to give him a pass. Joe's in a meeting. Okay. Uh, okay. He's, Joe's our guy. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's why I had to call him out. Normally, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, he's a, he's an absolute OG. Charles, you're the man. Great week. We'll see you on Monday. Supi, yes, as always, you finish the week with us in yeoman's fashion. So have a great week, and we'll see you next week. All right? See you guys. Good luck to everybody this weekend. My man. Let's make right, some money. Ha, ha, ha. It's time for the closing bell. All right, AB, the crew needs a bounce back from their bounce back. Where are we going today? The crew is going to the northeast here with UConn <laughs> minus nine and a half. Coach, I know how large of a fan you are of the state of Connecticut and living in in a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the oh crew's God. going to UConn. They smashed. Look at it go. Do it again. 20 years. I could not wait to get out of Connecticut. By the way, they won. If you wondered if they're motivated in this tournament, they won by 27 yesterday. So a hey, lot of their starters didn't have to play a lot. Yesterday, Howie brought it up, and he's a 1,000% correct. That Danny Hurley is legitimately Bobby Knight style. Like, there ain't no taking off, Hoss. Like, you're playing, you're here, and I'll rip into you. I don't care what we're doing. Yeah, like, they, they don't they don't take days off, man. No doubt about it. Speaking of baseball, real quick, and I know everybody's got to get out of here, uh, but a lot of people are asking about sending you beer money, AB. You've won so much money for people and all that kind of stuff. We have a charity, Brett Saberhagen, and it's going to become, like, our official charity. They, they do – uh, they take care of families who, you know, have a family member stricken with cancer. Because you never think about the family members. You think about the person who has the cancer. Uh, it's called Saves Wings. And we're, we're getting the QR codes. We're getting all that stuff set up. But that will be, if you guys have a really good week or a really good day and you want to pay it forward, you're going to be able to do it through that and help us fight cancer through one of my heroes, former World Series champion with George Brett. Kansas City Royals. He's out here on the West Coast now. We'll have more on that, but I see a lot of people in the chat asking about that. So we're going to certainly have a charity aspect to this for a really good week or day, A.B. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, if anybody sends me a penny, uh, first off, I'm sending it back. And second <laughs> off, I'm going to tell you, don't ever send me money. You either keep your money, which is great. I'm glad that everybody's winning. And number two, coach, like you said, like if it's going to go anywhere, a hundred percent of it is going to a charity. Don't, don't ever send me money. The, I'm telling you, you'll get that back lickety split, son. Like that's coming right back at you. Yeah, don't do it. And also in the chat, real quick before yeah. we go, um, uh, Scott says, uh, "AB patiently waiting for the college baseball straight place." A hundred percent, Scott. So uh, we have seen that totals, run lines, and team totals are starting to come out. We're gonna quickly get them in the next two weeks. Come out before 10 a.m. Eastern. They're not doing that yet, but they will. And the minute that they do, buddy, I promise you. I promise you we'll get them up. And number three, don't ever send me money. Either keep it or put it in charity. Don't ever send that to me for sure. Coach, great job. Now, somebody in the chat said they might send you Chick-fil-A gift cards. You might take that. I mean, oh. if we know anything with food, you would take that. Oh, let me say this. We would 100% accept that. And let me tell you what. I was in a Chick-fil-A in Hermitage, Tennessee. Shout out if anybody knows where that's at. Walking in, and I heard a dad on his son as a dad would. And he said, son, 
this is Chick-fil-A. Tuck your damn shirt in. I was like, respect. <laughs> On that, Great give job. me my one shot, producer man. It's time to wrap it up. It's time for all of you to go out into the world and be kind to one another. Pay it forward. Spread the word of the show. You got to have a place where you can come every single day and be heard, be valued, and understand what you're all about. So with all that being said, there's only one thing left to do. And I believe you all know what that is. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all of these tickets straight to the pay window. For our attacker, Lobo, the man from the Dirty Dirty Charles. My man, Soupy, so nice and clean with the beard game. My five-tool player, A.B., producer man, always behind the scenes, making the show look like a million bucks. I am simply the coach, trying to keep this train on said track. We grind for you so we can win with you. It's truly what we're all about seven days a week right here at Driving the Line. Good luck.